The same people who are pushing all the poisonous foods on you are taking all the natural seeds and storing them some, for something down the road in the future. Well, they finish off all of us. Do you know that the cancers skyrocketed, skyrocketed uh, from about the 70s onwards? And in, this, in the early 70s, in fact, all medical staff and students were taught that, that certain types of cancers were incredibly rare. And they went through the different nationalities who were more prone to one type than another and statistics and all the rest of it. You know, it's widespread across the world now, all kinds of cancers. And, and the, the guys coming out of medical school today are taught that's normal. You, you realize it's easy to brainwash the academics. Easy. With whatever they're taught. They've got the latest facts and figures. must be true. They never question it from then on. But they're taught it's all quite natural. Here's an article here. Uh, from it's called non it's called um, non GM report the organic and non GM report and I read part of this in, a while ago it was June fourteenth two thousand and ten but it says the following interviews with another scientist Don Huber who recently retired from Purdue University who has also documented negative environmental impacts from glyphosate glyphosate is the, the Monsanto pesticide that everything in the GMO line now is getting soaked with. And it says the widespread use of glyphosate is causing negative impacts on soil and plants as well as possibly animal and human health. These are key findings of Don Huber, Emeritus Professor of Plant Pathology at Purdue University. In a paper published in the European Journal of Agronomy in October 2009, Hubert and co-author G.S. Joel from Purdue's Department of Botany and Plant Pathology state that the widespread use of glyphosate that we see today in agriculture in the United States can significantly increase the severity of various plant diseases, impair, impair plant defense to pathogens and diseases, and immobilize soil and plant nutrients, rendering them unavailable for plant use. But what's interesting even here, I, I, I thought to myself, is the same thing as they're doing to people with infertility. They actually use it. The stuff actually works on the plant by destroying its immune system to all of its enemies. Isn't that an interesting little fact? Interesting now again that all medical students are taught that people today have a vastly reduced immune system from those th- from 30 years ago or, or further back. Anyway, further, the authors say that glyphosate stimulates the growth of fungi, and it's true they've got tremendous fungus pro- problems and all the rest of wherever they spray this stuff, and enhances the virulence of pathogens such as fusarium and can have serious consequences for sustainable production of a wide range of susceptible crops. But they also go down and on about the effects as well in humans and mammals, and it doesn't, doesn't just immobilize plant nutrients into the plant, you see, the plants pick up everything that you need, even the trace elements like manganese and copper, potassium and so on. But when it's not in the plant, you aren't getting that anymore, and that's necessary for your immune system. Everyone today is deficient in zinc and uh, magnesium and, uh, and potassium, even copper, manganese and so on. Glyphosate kills weeds by tying up essential nutrients needed to keep the plant defenses active. Glyphosate doesn't kill weeds directly, but shuts down their defense mechanisms so the pathogens in the soil can mobilize and kill the weeds. Glyphosate completely weakens the plant, making it susceptible to soil-borne fungal pathogens. But they've also found, too, in the food chain into mammals, as I say, you end up with all these problems with stomach. Even the early tests and and the subsequent tests that they've done show uh, that uh, even from potatoes, they were fed to rats and other mammals, they end up with all these stomach and, and cancers and so on, and intestinal cancers. Amazing that it's really skyrocketed with humans too, since they in- introduced it in Canada first of all, and then the States and elsewhere. Same effects. Well, why should we are a mammal too, you know? <laughs> and then there's those the disbelievers who say, well, they never do that to us. Nobody would do that to you. And I, I said to you already, you think man has changed, or the dominant minority that plan the future of the world, plan world wars, did the horrors of the Soviet system, the horrors of Nazi Germany, do you think they've really changed? That suddenly evolved, that a great leap forward in the last 50, 60 years, really? When did that? I missed it somewhere. What happened? 
They've already planned a future with a vastly reduced population. What would that take? It would take infertility. It would take a faster kill rate with the people so they don't live so long. That We've got both of those in action right now. Being taught is quite normal in the medical community that are coming out of university. But they also find that the toxins that are in these plants too are passed on to um, mammals as well. Toxins produced can infect the roots, the head of the plant, be transferred to the rest of the plant. The toxin levels in straw can be high enough to make cattle and pigs infertile. Isn't that an interesting thing? Well, I'm not a cat. I'm not a cow. I'm not a pig, really. They've called us worse than that in the past, you know. In your paper, you say that the introduction of such an intense mineral chelator, such as glyphosate, into the food chain through accumulation in feed, forage, and food and root exudation into groundwater could pose significant health concerns for animals and humans and needs further evaluation. And then they go on to explain it all to you, such as micronutrients and so on, all the things that's essential for your life, folks. They go on to allergic reactions. Everybody today is allergic to something. Some, some people, many things. They never used to have total allergy syndrome until about 1960s, and suddenly it broke out. With the help of the inoculation increases with national health service systems in some countries and stuff like that. But it had never been heard of before. Never in history had it been heard of before. Total allergy syndrome. What is an allergy syndrome? It's a problem with your immune system. Is it what I say earlier? I said earlier that everyone have, has got a vastly reduced immune system than folk from 30 years ago or even all before that. And Roundup Ready is made up by, made by Monsanto, the same guys that are taking over your food supply, which should be enough to get you really, really worried. The same groups that are funded by your tax money too, they do get money to um, experiment with and so on through, for research and development from your taxes and using universities as well. Then they grab the patents. And working with the five agribusinesses that own the entire supply of food of the world now and can cut you off at any time. You're not worried? You're not worried that these guys are, were all taken from the industri- military industrial complex. There were guys who worked with bacteriums for killing people and for altering the gene, gene structures in people and animals of an enemy long-term takedown. These are the guys who put your food together that you're munching away on right now. doesn't worry you. Monsanto and others. Really? I'll also put this link up tonight from this article I've just read, and you can read the rest of it for yourself. I'll put a link up, too, on the latest information from the Washington Monthly on something that was used in Vietnam, made by, guess who, Monsanto, Agent Orange. Because now they've got all these problems coming out generations later in Vietnam, and children who are born with lots of strange defects, genetic alterations, and so on. And you can watch the video for yourself and go further if it really interests you. If you can handle it. See, most people, as I say, cannot handle the bad news. When people ask me on a personal level, even in a phone call or something off the air, what's happening, and they'll say they want the truth. I'll say, can you, do you really, really want the truth? Because ignorance is bliss. And very few can really handle how bad it really is. They can't believe it's actually happening and been happening and there's a lot lot more to come. When you have the military-industrial complex and you have reports put out by NATO, the think tank for NATO and for the U.S. military, and I have them in my archives section on the website, their projection for the next 40, 50 years and further, all on the same track with vast depopulation of, of people, only a few mega cities in the future, 2050. Well, ask, ask yourself this, would they really want you? Would they really need you? Would a scientific society really need you in their system? Ask yourself that right off the bat. Because, you see, they don't. What do they do with ones that they don't? Well, you're a useless eater. You're taking up our resources. That's been said many times by the big players in their own books and publications. And many of the public agreed with them, thinking they were on the same par, the same level. 
mistakenly, of course, because, you, you see, the brother of Aldous Huxley was Julian Huxley, and I've read his articles and from his book on the air, the first CEO of UNESCO, to bring in a common culture for children. He said lots will think that they can come through into this new system, but they'll be in for a surprise because we won't need them. Most folk think far higher of themselves than they actually are. Especially those who are on board with the agenda. And it's people in the bottom level who are on board with, yeah, there's too many people. I watch all the documentaries on public broadcasting. Yeah, they really do. And they really think that somehow they're superior by parroting a Rockefeller funded or some other foundation funded propaganda documentary where they can make you believe anything. Quite something. 